Previously on The Garage Engineer, we set up the newly released Harbor Freight two position mobile bandsaw stand. It can cut in the horizontal position and in the vertical position, which makes this product very unique. The powerhouse of the stand is the Bauer 5 inch deep cut bandsaw. We made a few cuts with it just to test to see how well it can cut. If you have not seen the first video, the link to the video is posted in the video description below. So we're back in the shop and now I want to address the switch problem that we were having before. So let's get into that and fix it. So just to recap, the issue we were having is, is we were, had screwed the lever. It's in the on position now, but this is the on off switch that will hold the button turned on when you're wanting to cut. However, for our Bauer saw, we were in the very far setting, and we turned the switch on, and nothing happens. It's engaging the switch here at the bottom, but the actual switch for the machine is at the top. See, if you'll see, I'm going to push up here, but I don't have it plugged in right now, but it's up here not down here. So what we need to do is somehow bend this metal piece up a little bit so it's engaging the button up top instead of down lower. I haven't figured out any other way to do it without that but we've got the ability so let's get it fixed. So I think for our goal is, is we're going to bend the piece up this upward more. Probably about a good half inch. And then we've got to bend the other side down. So that fits in the slot. We'll give it a test. So I think this has enough height bending up, but this piece needs to bend down farther to go up underneath here. So I'm gonna just work on that and we'll get it to fit right in there. So I think this is a good stopping point right here. Uh, this is the bends I think we made. Let's test it in the machine to see if what we are guessing uh, works. Now I'm gonna put it in the very last hole. I, I don't know if it's gonna be the last hole or the second last hole. We'll try with the last one first. Okay, I do, it's hitting right here on the screw in the back right here. So I'm going to have to bend it up just a little bit more. So I did a re-bend. Uh, basically, I just moved the bend up a little higher. Uh, it is probably, let's see here, it is, not probably, it is, the bend's at an inch and a half from the top here. Uh, I probably would have made it maybe, uh, probably an inch and three-eighths would have been a little bit better, but I think this will be good. Anywhere between an inch and three-eighths and an inch and a half. So what we're going to do is stick it in the last hole. We're going to screw it in. I'm going to throw our screw around here. Let's see here. So we'll get that screwed in. And we'll see how it hits on the butt on the switch. All right, so we've got the switch here. We're gonna uh, drop the arm. Pull it all the way back. And there you go. Now that holds it while you cut. So I'm not sure why the they made the bend like that. Maybe it'll work on other uh, types of machines, but the Bauer being their own product, you think they would have tested it. But easy enough fix. I don't think it's a deterrent from this at all, and I feel, still think it's a great uh, stand for what it does. So now let's check on the calibration uh, in the horizontal stand formation, uh, since we didn't do that last time. So when we mounted it last time, we just screwed in the two bolts here. 
uh, and just put it on there. We weren't really concerned where it sat uh, as long as it wasn't hitting the stand. But now we want to align it, so now it's going to be uh, we're, the first adjustment we're going to make is up top here. So before we get started, uh, I wanted just to show you what I'm looking at. And it's basically you're looking at the blade right here between the gap. Uh, now don't worry about if the back looks uh, out of a line, we'll adjust that. Right now you just want to get the blade somewhat centered in between the two uh, on the gap on here. And the way you do that is by adjusting these screws. So we'll do that first and then we'll get it square by using the adjustment uh, knobs on the back and that kind of tilt that moves the, the back of the saw this way and that will get our uh, blade square to the fence so uh, that's what we're I'm going to be doing so the blade on this was not too bad I'm just going to tweak it just a little bit so it's more in the center there you go I mean, there's no right or wrong answer. It doesn't have to be perfectly uh, one way or the other. Just get it close to the center and tighten it down. And tighten this side down too. All right. Now let's check for square. Uh, this I don't have my machine of square with me, so we're just going to use this as the end of a uh, off of the end of a combination square without the ruler on it. So we're going to use that. So first thing we do is we'll make get make sure the fence is set to zero. Here's your zero degree mark. Um, it's kind of arbitrary. It's just wherever you put it, you just loosen it with the handle. This is where you can do your different compound uh, angles or your different angles, I should say. And then you just put it on zero. It's really kind of arbitrary. You got to check it every time to make sure it's square. Tighten it down, take your square, and put it up against the fence. Now let's check to see if it's square on to the blade. So now that we're on the other side of the saw, at this angle it's going to be kind of hard uh, to see on video, but basically when you slide this up, you've got, you can kind of see the shadow right here. There's more of a shadow here than there is up here. And if you're looking down, you can see the gap a lot more. So that means the saw on the back of it is tilted this way. So we've got to use the adjustments to move the saw that way until it's perfectly square onto the blade. So I'm going to use these two adjustments, and depending on which direction we need to move the saw, I'm going to uh, turn more one more than the other and then lock it in. So basically, I'm looking down at the square in the blade to see how, how it's aligning. And it should be perfectly aligned when we get it correct. But I can see a gap. If you look down, you'll see a gap one way or the other. All right, I wanted to take a break in the middle of the video. Uh, as I am editing the video, I see there's an inconsistency of what I'm saying. So what happened in the previous clip when we were doing the close-up of the square, it showed the gap into the back side of the blade, which is closer to the fence. When I went to the zoomed out version and was making the adjustments, the square must have been off a little bit previously. So when I re-squared it to the fence, the gap moved to the front of the square closer to me. So that's why you see uh, the adjustments I'm making is opposite to what needs to be done if the gap was in the back. So uh, I just wanted to make that kind of clear that if the gap is in the back of the uh, blade closest to the fence, then you'd want to push the back of the saw to the left. Whereas here, um, as you're going to see, the adjustments I'm going to be making is pushing the the saw to the right and that's because I guess the I, ha I pushed the square firmer to the fence and it showed that the, the uh, gap moved forward on the blade so that's why there's an inconsistency of what I'm saying so I hope that doesn't confuse anybody but I wanted to kind of make that clear of why it changed between the first clip and then the second clip when we're actually making the adjustment so let's get back to the video so what we need to do is we're going to turn the back here and it's going to shift the blade this way. And you might need to loosen this side some so you can push it more that way. 
I'll just do a little bit more here. Now it's getting tight, so we got to loosen this side a little bit. And that should be even. Now the trick is you want to tighten these down, but you got to tighten them evenly. That might adjust, uh, that might move it a little bit. So you're just going to have to play with it as you're tightening it to make sure it stays. So if you come on the saw, looking down at it, past the handle, if you put, take your square and put it up against the fence and the blade, then there's, you should not see a gap between the two right there and that means you're square to the fence so let's do a test cut on a piece of wood and we'll see how well that cuts So this was the top side of the cut. If we put our square here, you'll see that there's a little bit of light coming through the back here on this side. So that means we the uh, we went a little too far. So we're going to have to uh, adjust the back and um, push it to the left if we're facing it. So we just got to make adjustments. But that's pretty close, it's just a little bit off. It's also uh, off this direction, which if this was the top, then that means that our stand here is angled this way. So that means to fix that, you've got to adjust the, uh, there's some bolts on the back there that we uh, have to play with. So that's roughly how you get your uh, machine aligned. It always, it, you could spend hours trying to get it just perfectly, but that's basically the steps to get the, uh, to get you in the right direction. Fixing the on, on and off uh, lever, I don't know why it didn't come out of the box perfect, but that's easily fixable. Still doesn't deter me as a negative to this. Um, we'll just have to put it into production to see uh, over time how well it works. My initial thoughts, from the last video to now, it really hasn't changed. It's still a great machine, great stand, and I'm glad uh, I got it. So I hope this helps you out. Uh, leave in the comments below if you have any other suggestions to how to uh, fix the stand to make it even better, easier steps to calibrate it. I'd love to hear about that. Other than that, have fun in your shop. See you next time. And if you'd like to see more videos like the one that you just saw, you can check here and here. And remember the ABCs of making. Always be creating. Till next time.